Hi, I'm Jeff Hajek, the owner and founder of Election. This video is part of my lean training system. It was originally released as a DVD a long time ago, but times have changed and the look of some of these LTS videos is now a bit dated. The content is still spot on though. So rather than just discontinue the line, I am posting the majority of each of the 36 videos here with the remainder available at Velaction Videos. That's our video service where you can download a wealth of supporting content and watch subscriber only videos. I recommend subscribing and hitting the notification button if you want to make sure you don't miss any new content. I would also really appreciate if you would hit the like button if this video is helpful and you want to see more content similar to it. The like button helps us get found on YouTube, but it also lets us figure out where you want us to put our future effort. Now enjoy the free version of this video. Welcome to Velaction Continuous Improvement's overview presentation on how to analyze data from a process walk. I am Jeff Hajek, the owner and founder of Velaction. I like to start each presentation by going over the objectives of what I hope you will learn from it. You should finish this presentation understanding some basic techniques for reviewing data. You should learn what data segmentation is, and you should learn how the data you collect interacts with the current state process flowcharts that you will be developing. In the analysis step of a Kaizen event, you will be looking at the data that you collected during the process walk and prior to starting the event. The goal is to be able to take that raw data and turn it into useful information. And by that, I mean information that the team can act on to make improvements. Let's look at a few principles to follow when analyzing your data. The first is that you can only act on fact-based knowledge. Opinions, assumptions, and tribal knowledge must be verified before you make any decisions. The second is we need something called frontline vigilance. Basically, it means that the frontline employees and frontline leaders that are involved with the work on a daily basis need to make sure that the information makes sense. It also means that they have the best idea of what information your team needs to collect. The next principle is that we only take data on processes that are somewhat standardized. If you try to take data on an operation that does not follow the same process every time, the numbers will be all over the map. They will not tell you anything important. Another principle is that using segments will help provide greater insight into your data. When diving into data, it is important to focus on finding the root cause. This may not always be blatantly obvious. You may have to do a little bit of digging. The key, though, is to analyze the data with the goal of uncovering the relationship between cause and effect. This principle, that of immediacy, goes hand in hand with cause and effect. Finally, you have to know what you're trying to learn when you do data analysis. The process of crunching through data takes time and money. There has to be a purpose for the work you are putting into it. There are a few general steps to data analysis. The first thing you need to do is review the data. Check it over to make sure that it makes sense. Look for aberrations or any other problems with your data. This step also includes preparing it for use. Transfer the data to an Excel spreadsheet and organize your column layout. Once you've done your basic perusal of the data, make a hypothesis. That basically means make an educated guess about what the data is telling you. Perhaps. As you look over the data on cycle time, you notice that a disproportionate number of delays occur immediately after breaks or lunches. You might form a hypothesis that tools are not being returned to their proper location, or that people forget which steps they are on, or that people are returning late. The point is to turn that data into a scientific guess that you will go and confirm. Which happens to be the next step. Once you have your hypothesis, go to the shop floor and check it out. Many people skip this confirmation step. They make an assessment from the data and assume that their hypothesis about it is correct. Take a few minutes to make sure. I hope you are getting something valuable out of this video. If you want to get more out of this program, we recommend watching it on Velaction videos. You'll be able to watch the entire video, mostly ad-free, and view subscriber-only programs you'll also have access to a load of continuous improvement downloads. 
The steps in the last slide were the generalized process to review data. Let's focus now on how to apply those steps to your process walk. Again, dive into your data to get things going. Pay special attention to anything that stands out as an opportunity to improve a process. Any decision point on a flowchart is a good place to start. Find the data that accompanies it and see what it tells you. As you dive into the data, you'll nearly always uncover something that you need to know more about. Don't hesitate to go back to the process walk step to gather that data. The better the information you start with, the better your new process will be. Once you see the data and have an understanding of the magnitude of the problems your process is experiencing, it is time to prioritize. You'll do this by considering how big the problems are as well as by estimating the difficulty to fix them. Once you know what you want to go after, head out and research the root causes. You'll have some idea because of the data, so in some cases, you'll just be looking for confirmation. The key here is to find the underlying issue as part of your data analysis so you're working on the problem rather than on a symptom. Let's shift gears a bit here and move on from what to do and talk a little about how to do it. I recommend gathering as many data parameters as you can. Instead of just collecting data about how long a task took, for example, consider gathering the start time and end time. The more different ways you can look at that piece of information, the more useful it will be. Of course, like most things, there is a downside. Gathering more data has a higher cost to it. The key is balance. Don't go overboard. But give yourself some flexibility to be creative when you're looking over your data. I also recommend avoiding working with aggregate data. Average call length per day might be useful, but it buries information within it. Is there a busy time? Do a handful of outliers skew the average? It is also impossible to go from aggregate to individual data points. With a full set of data, though, you can look at averages. Another useful tip is to retain a pristine copy of your data. Don't work from your only copy. If you mess something up or simply accidentally delete something, you'll have no way to recover the information. During your data analysis efforts, you will most likely make use of Microsoft Excel. That makes sense. It is a very powerful tool, and with a bit of training, it can make quick work of most data analysis jobs. Unfortunately, it is a very intimidating tool, and some people have very strong negative views about it. While it is true that there is a steep learning curve to this tool, it is generally worth it to learn how to put it to use. The more you know about its capabilities and the more adept you are at putting those capabilities to use, the more you'll be able to accomplish. And while it is a very quantitative tool, there is a certain amount of creativity that is needed to figure out how to apply it to a given situation. One of the problems with a highly sophisticated tool such as Excel, though, is that most people only use a handful of the basic tools. Spend a little time learning some of the more advanced features, and you'll be surprised at how much more effective your data analysis time can be. One of the commonly used tools is the chart. The visual nature of this type of graphic makes hidden gems jump out at you much more easily than if you are just staring at a row of numbers. I encourage you to experiment with the chart types that are further down this list. While less utilized than the top few, they may be helpful in certain circumstances. Control F brings up the Find and Replace menu. The Find function helps you quickly locate a specific piece of information. The Replace function will probably be used less frequently, but can be an invaluable tool when you are cleaning up your data. Perhaps Jonathan's name was listed as John, Johnny, and Jonathan by different people. Find and Replace can help you make quick work of cleaning up those kinds of problems. Conditional formatting lets you adjust the appearance of a cell automatically based upon the values of that cell or other cells. For example, if you have a column for temperature, you can make values below 40 degrees show up in blue and those above 80 show up in red. Those in the middle could be green. Newer versions of Excel also let you use a color gradient based upon values. This lets you quickly find abnormal conditions in a large list of data values. There are also some icon sets you can use. 
This example in the upper right shades in the circle based upon the value in the drop-down menu. On occasion, you will acquire prepackaged data in a format other than an XLS or XLSX spreadsheet. There are several options for importing data. The one you will probably use most frequently is from text. This allows you to import a CSV or comma delimited file. A higher order tool that may come in handy on rare occasions is Solver. This tool straddles the line between analysis and improvement. Essentially, it looks for a maximum or minimum output value based upon changes in variables. It could be used for something like adjusting your product mix to maximize profit. In a simple system, you probably would not need it. But if you had supplier reliability data, line stops, quality data, and other factors available to you, and you had several products in your product line, finding the optimum solution would be more challenging. Solver allows you to set up a model and then the tool sifts through all the different possible combinations to find the best result. Again, this is a pretty sophisticated tool that is hardly ever used, but can be powerful in the right situations. Segmentation, on the other hand, is a tool that is probably not used often enough. Basically, it is just slicing the data up into smaller groups to see if there are specific behaviors to each group. Let's start out by thinking about how we can break down a group of people. Perhaps we own a pet store. We would most likely be concerned with pet owners. There might also be another group of potential pet owners, and then a group of people with allergies, and then a group of people who don't like pets at all. As a store owner, right now we just want to be thinking about those that have animals living with them today. We might want to target dog owners specifically. And then we might break them down by those with a yard and those without one. In a Kaizen event, we may be thinking about quality issues, line stops, machine breakdowns, or late deliveries. In each of these, we can probably group our data into smaller and smaller categories. We want to break them down until we identify a subgroup with a unique set of causes. And that's really the point of segmentation. We want to be able to identify a targeted group that we can impact when we make changes. If we get our segments right, we will see a distinction between the data in our groups. If we do it incorrectly, the data will look similar on both sides of our split. As an example, let's say we break down late deliveries by time of day and by the day of the week. If the morning deliveries have the same on-time delivery as afternoon deliveries, but Mondays are significantly different than Tuesdays and the rest of the week, where would you target your investigation of root causes? As part of the Lean training system this video comes from, we offer a variety of Lean LEGO training packages. These include our Lean LEGO flow simulation, mistake proofing or pokey yoke Lean LEGO exercise, and our visual controls and 5S Lean LEGO exercise. We've also got an office flow simulation for those not implementing continuous improvement on the shop floor. Click the links in the description below or click on cards that pop up on this video to learn more. We'll also add links at the end. Another powerful tool that you will be likely to use is the sort and filter function. This tool actually goes hand in hand with segmentation. Under the data tab, there is a filter button. Highlight the data that you want to be able to sift through and click this option. You'll see the down arrow buttons show up on your header row. Click these little arrow buttons and you can sort the data in ascending or descending order or by category if you have an unordered data set. You can also filter out specific data. This sample data set contains information about how long it took me to get to work. I could, for example, sort by the days I hit the snooze button and see if that had an impact upon my tardiness. Let's say you have a set of complicated data. You could use the sort and filter function, but that tends to be somewhat limited when you're looking at multiple parameters. This is where a pivot table comes in handy. I will warn you though, Pivot tables are not for the faint of heart. They are also not something that is easy to learn on the fly during a Kaizen event. You'll have to know how to use these before the event starts if you want them to be effective. In this sample, the pivot table compares days of week and snoozes to give us a total count in each data bucket. From this information, it is pretty clear that I hate Mondays. The pivot table could go further and make a bucket that adds late arrivals into the mix. The point is that once you have a pivot table set up, 
it is a simple task to reorganize the data over and over to test out your hypotheses and see if something jumps out at you. And once again, I want to stress that pivot tables don't come naturally to most people. There is a pretty steep learning curve. If you are a team leader and suspect that your event will need pivot tables, recruit an expert to your team. What reaction do you have when I say the word statistics? If you are like most people, you think statistics is a four-letter word. It's got a bad rap because of its mathematical complexity and its ability to be used for evil. People pick and choose the statistics that support their claim. There's even an expression about that. Water down, it goes lies, darn lies, and statistics. But statistics do tie into lean, so we have to talk about them at least a little. I want to point out that in many math classes, statistics and probability are taught together. Statistics are used to describe the makeup of a population. Probability looks into the future and predicts the chance of something happening, often based upon the statistics of a population. Thanks for watching this extended free version of our Lean Training System module video. If you want to watch the whole video, check it out at Velaction Videos. If you want to make sure you don't miss the next LTS video that we post, please be sure to subscribe down below. We also always appreciate likes as it helps us get viewed more and makes us keep adding additional content. Thanks for watching and best wishes on your continuous improvement journey.